Hello. How's it going? My name is Kyle, and I am your virtual assistant with Guardian Group Services. I am here to help you pass the FDNY FireGuard exam to get your F2 FireGuard license. This video will help you prepare, so take good notes. The FDNY headquarters is open Monday to Friday 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Closed on public holidays. So let's have a look and jump right into this materials. A certificate of fitness is required by all fire guards and shelters where a sprinkler system is not installed or when a fire protection system is temporarily out of service. A shelter is a building designed to provide a temporary residence for at-risk populations, such as homeless or elderly persons. Fire guards are responsible for eliminating fire hazards and assisting in the evacuation of occupants during drills and in cases of emergency. A fire safety coordinator is required to supervise fire guards, and that person must have an F-80 license. Take note of those two licenses the F-2 is fire guard for shelters, and the F-80 is the fire safety coordinator. The F-02 exam will consist of 20 multiple choice questions, administered on a touchscreen computer monitor. It is a time limit exam. Based on the amount of the questions, you will have 30 minutes to complete the test. A passing score of at least 70% is required in order to secure a certificate of fitness. F02 certificates of fitness are valid for a period not to exceed three years from the date of issuance. Once again, the F02 license is valid for three years. Fire guards are responsible for the safety of all shelter occupants and employees by eliminating fire hazards and assisting in the evacuation of occupants during drills and in case of an emergency. Fire guards are responsible for making sure that fire safety regulations are being complied with in the shelter. Buildings or parts thereof occupied or operated to be occupied by emergency shelters shall be continuously patrolled by a fire guard. Every area of the building shall be patrolled at least once every hour. Take note, every area must be patrolled every hour. The F2 fire guard must do these patrols and document them. For the exam you will need to know some basic words in the definitions. Do and tea worry they are not that hard, and these will pop up on the exam. Building occupants, all persons in the shelter, including employees, clients, staff and visitors. Central Station Company, a facility that receives alarm signals from a protected premise and retransmits or otherwise reports such alarm signals to the FDNY. Fire Alarm System, any system, including any interconnected fire alarm subsystem, of components and circuits arranged to monitor and enunciate the status of fire alarm or supervisory signal initiating devices. Impairment. Any condition in which a fire protection system cannot perform its designed fire safety function. Fire protection systems include sprinkler systems, standpipe systems and fire alarm systems. Fire guard. A person holding a certificate of fitness for such purposes, who is trained in and responsible for maintaining a fire watch. Fire watch. A temporary measure intended to ensure continuous and systematic surveillance of a building or portion thereof by one or more qualified individuals for the purposes of identifying and controlling fire hazards, including detecting early signs of fire, raising an alarm of fire, notifying the department, and performing such other fire safety duties as may be prescribed by the commissioner. An easy way to remember that one is a person and the other is the measure to protect. Non-fire emergency, a biological, chemical, or nuclear incident or release, declaration of emergency by a lawful authority, explosion, medical emergency, natural disaster, or other emergency affecting the premises or the safety of building occupants. Owner-occupant responsibility, the owner shall be responsible at all times for the safe maintenance of a building, structure and premises in accordance with this code. Correction and abatement of violations of this code and the rules shall be the responsibility of the owner. If an occupant creates or allows to be created hazardous conditions in violation of this code or the rules, the occupant shall also be responsible for the abatement of such hazardous conditions. Homelessness is a significant problem in New York City and the number of men, women and children that need shelter continues to rise. In 2013, it was estimated that over 45,000 people spent the night in a New York City homeless shelter, and approximately 19,000 of those people were children. 
In 2012, just 35% of families with children who applied to stay in city shelters were accepted, down from 52% in 2007. The number of people seeking housing in shelters in the city is increasing significantly, and with it comes new fire safety concerns. We shall review a few important cases in regards to fires in homeless shelters. We shall also see a few video clips of actually fires that have happened and review what went wrong and how we shall prepare for and respond to a fire in a homeless shelter. Fire Summary Location Homeless Shelter in Paris, Texas State, 2009 a 42-bed shelter housing 28 men caught fire due to ignition of a table inside the shelter that was piled high with donated clothing. More than 20 residents evacuated the shelter as a result of smoke and flames after several men attempted to extinguish the flames with pans of water. There was a heavy smoke condition in the shelter, making it difficult to see and even more difficult to evacuate. Five men who lived on the second floor were killed in the blaze. An investigation of the fire determined that the building had no sprinkler system, fire alarms or smoke detectors. Records indicated that the shelter hadn't been inspected for at least five years, even though inspections were required on an annual basis. The shelter was used as a drop-off point for paper products, rags, clothing, furniture and other material. Lessons learned Number 1. Periodic fire department inspections should be conducted as required. Number 2. Excess debris and improper storage is a fire hazard. Number 3. Lack of fire prevention devices in the shelter increases the probability of fatal fires. Fire Summary Location Homeless Shelter in Bronx, NY Date December 7, 2012 and December 9, 2012 At this Bronx, NY shelter, improperly stored mattresses were ignited in two separate incidents only two days apart. The first incident occurred when a child was playing with a match and set a mattress on fire on the second floor of the building. This was a small fire that resulted in no injuries and was quickly extinguished. The second fire started when another child was playing with matches who also ignited a mattress that had been stored in the building's lobby. Smoke and flames from the resulting fire spread into the stairwell and the upper floor hallways. There were no building-wide alarms or hallway smoke detectors in the building to notify occupants of the fire. Two building occupants tried to use portable fire extinguishers to extinguish the fire, but found them empty and inoperable. With the smoke and flames having filled the hallways, many occupants tried to escape by using the fire escapes. However, occupants reported that some of the fire escapes were broken, having missing steps and jammed ladders. The fire resulted in four adults and two children being seriously injured. It was determined that the mattresses that were involved in these fires had not been properly removed from the building. Instead, they were stacked in the lobby and propped against walls in common areas of the building. It was also determined that the fire escapes were not in good working order, many of the fire extinguishers were not operable, and that the building did not have a fire alarm or sprinkler system. All of these factors contributed to the devastation that resulted from this fire. Lessons learned, fire escapes must be inspected to ensure that they are in working order, Lack of a building-wide fire alarm system will cause significant delays in implementing a building evacuation, and excess debris and improper storage presents a fire hazard. Inspections must be done. Fire Summary Location Homeless Shelter in New York, NY Date August 28, 2012 A homeless shelter in New York City caught fire and required complete evacuation. The fire started when a lit cigarette left unattended by a tenant ignited a mattress on the fourth floor. The fire was quickly extinguished by the building's sprinkler system. One resident suffered from and was treated for smoke inhalation. Fortunately, the fire was confined to a single apartment. The shelter had recently been fined more than $45,000 by the Department of Buildings for safety violations, including a violation for failure to provide sprinkler protection. Records show that the building had seven active building violations at the time of the fire. Lessons learned Number 1. Periodic fire department inspections should be conducted. Number 2. Ignition sources, such as lit cigarettes, should not be left unattended. Number 3. Fire safety education may be beneficial to homeless shelter residents. All three shelter fires demonstrate how important it is for shelter staff to be proactive. Fire guards and other safety staff should make it a priority to identify any potential fire safety violations and correct them before they are identified by the fire department or buildings department. We shall now discuss your job and what you are responsible for. Fire guards in shelters are responsible for the following. 
being familiar with the fire alarm system of the shelter in which they are employed and the emergency preparedness plan for that shelter. Continuously patrolling all areas of the shelter at least once an hour. Continuously patrolling the area as affected by the out-of-service fire protection system, keeping constant watch for fires. Maintaining a record of patrols. Immediately reporting any fire to the department and notifying emergency preparedness staff designated for the shelter. Assisting with evacuating shelter occupants and other employees during emergency drills and actual emergencies. Fire guards should be trained in the use of portable fire extinguishers and equipped with a portable fire extinguisher or be aware of the location of a readily accessible portable fire extinguishers in the area of patrol. You must know the building's emergency procedures, performing other fire safety related duties as dictated by their supervisors. F80 holders are required in any building or occupancy required to have a one-way voice communication system, regardless of occupancy classification, and that is operated or occupied for more than 15 persons for a period of more than 30 days, including emergency shelters. Fire guards are responsible for patrolling every area of the shelter, at least once every hour. Once again, every hour you must do patrols. During patrols, fire guards must ensure that they are adhering to the following guidelines. Inspect all exits, stairways and hallways to determine condition and availability for use. All exits, stairways and hallways must be kept free of obstructions. Obstructions may prevent occupants from exiting the shelter in case of an emergency. Provisions shall be made for adequate clear routes of exit with doors opening in the direction of travel. Examine all doors in the area of patrol to determine operation conditions and availability for use. Ensure that exits are properly identified and that hallways, stairways, etc. are properly lit. The entire premises must be checked daily for potential ignition sources. Enforcement of smoking prohibitions. The fire guard should make sure that smoking does not occur in the shelter. Smoking tends to occur in bathrooms, hallways and stairwells, so the fire guard should pay particular attention to those areas. Continuously inspect the shelter for accumulation of rubbish. Trash and garbage must not be allowed to accumulate anywhere inside the shelter. Accumulated trash is a fire hazard. It may be easily ignited by a stray spark. Check sleeping areas for fire hazards and typical causes of fire. Fire guards should inspect sleeping areas and shelters for potential fire hazards. Shelter clients sometimes tamper with portable fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, and carbon monoxide detectors. Sprinkler heads are often tampered with or painted over in sleeping areas as well. Be on the lookout for suspicious behavior. Fire guards should also be aware that sometimes fires in shelters are started intentionally. All shelter employees should be aware of and must pay close attention to any type of suspicious behavior. Fire guards who witness suspicious behavior should inform their supervisor immediately. A written record of the fire watch patrol required by the fire code and the rules of the City of New York shall be maintained on the premises or other approved location for a minimum of three years, unless a different period of time is specified. Once again, keep your records. Fire guards should be familiar with the typical causes of fire in a homeless shelter so that they can be aware of these hazards and prevent fires. Overloaded extension cords, unattended and prohibited microwaves, misuse of portable heaters, unattended candles, hot plates, overloaded electrical outlets and power strips, unattended cigarettes or smoking in prohibited areas, and unattended or improperly used ovens and stoves. You will also need to know the different types of portable fire extinguishers. Portable fire extinguishers weighing 40 pounds or less must be installed so that the top of the extinguisher is not more than 5 FT above the floor. Portable fire extinguishers must never be on the floor. In case of any fire, 911 must be called. We shall discuss Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class K. A class of fire extinguisher is used for ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, some plastics, and textiles. A Class B fire extinguisher is used for flammable liquid and gas fires such as oil, gasoline, etc. A Class C fire extinguisher is used on fires that involve live electrical equipment which require the use of electrically non-conductive extinguishing agents. 
a class D fire extinguisher is used on combustible metals such as magnesium, titanium, sodium, etc., which require an extinguishing medium that does not react with the burning metal. A class K fire extinguisher is used on fires involving cooking media, fats, grease and oils, in commercial cooking, such as restaurants. OK so we have, class A, class B, class C, class D, and class K. These fire extinguishers must be visually inspected on a monthly basis. Fire guards should be familiar with the use of portable fire extinguishers in the event of a small fire. When operating a fire extinguisher, fire guards should remember the acronym PASS to make sure it is used properly. PASS stands for Pull, Aim, Squeeze, Sweep. Specifically, fire guards should ensure that they do the following. Pull the pin from the handle. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Squeeze the lever. Sweep the nozzle from side to side until the fire extinguisher is emptied. Once again, that is pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. The portable fire extinguishers are required to be checked monthly. The owner of the business is responsible to select a person to do a monthly inspection. This monthly inspection is called a quick check. The quick check should check if 1. The fire extinguisher is fully charged, 2. It is in its designated place, 3. It has not been actuated or tampered with, 4. There is no obvious or physical damage or condition to prevent its operation. At least annually all portable fire extinguishers must be checked by a W96 Certificate of Fitness holder from FDNY approved company. After each annual inspection W96 COF holder will replace the PFE tag. The information of the annual inspection record must be indicated on the new PFE tag. Sprinkler systems are required by law in buildings occupied as homeless shelters. Sprinklers are devices for automatically distributing water on a fire. Sprinkler systems are intended to control the spread of fire. Activation of the sprinkler system shall cause an alarm to be transmitted to an approved central station and will also sound an alarm throughout the shelter. The two different types of sprinklers are automatic sprinkler systems and non-automatic sprinkler systems. In most shelters, the sprinkler system is automatic since shelters are heated. A sprinkler water flow detector is a device which initiates an alarm indicating a flow of water in a sprinkler system. It is designed to signal when water flows through the fire protection system. Standpipe systems provide water that firefighters can manually discharge through hoses onto a fire. Water is fed into a piping system. The piping runs vertically and horizontally throughout the building. The pipes running vertically are usually called risers. The risers are usually located in the stairwell enclosures or in the hallways in the building. The piping system supplies water to every floor in the building. Standpipe systems are used in buildings where it may be difficult for the fire department to pump water on the fire. For example, standpipe systems are required in buildings that are over 75 feet in height. Carbon monoxide devices. Carbon monoxide alarm. A single or multiple station alarm responsive to carbon monoxide, containing a build and initiation sensor, notification device, and power supply, battery or electric with battery backup, and is not connected to a system. Most homeless shelters require carbon monoxide alarms. Carbon monoxide detectors are required in any building that has fossil, gas, and oil, fuel burning equipments. Carbon monoxide detectors shall be installed, tested, and maintained by qualified personnel in accordance with the manufacturer's published instructions. All building occupants and employees must be knowledgeable and trained how to manually activate the alarm initiating devices. Generally, these pull stations are installed at several locations on the premises and are usually located near the exits of a building. Activating the pull station is the most effective way to notify building occupants and employees in case of an emergency. There are two types of manual alarm initiating devices. They are called single action and double action stations. Single action pull stations. Single action stations require only one step to activate the alarm. The cover on these alarm stations serves as a lever. Double action pull stations. Double action stations require two steps in order to activate the alarm. The user must first break a glass, open a door or lift a cover. At least one extra glass plate is required for each fire alarm box. Extra glass plates must be stored on the premises. Non-fire emergencies in shelters. 
Medical emergencies in shelters. If a fire guard becomes aware of an injury or other medical emergency at the shelter premises, they should call 911 and provide as much of the following information as possible. Bomb or other explosion threats in shelters. Do not touch or move the item and try to isolate the area and safely evacuate. Any owner, occupant or other person who becomes aware of a fire or explosion or any other emergency shall immediately report such emergency to the department. No owner or other person shall issue any directive or take any action to prevent or delay the reporting of a fire or other emergency to the department. In case of a fire emergency, building occupants may have to be evacuated. Occupants on the fire floor and the floor above are most seriously threatened by the spread of the fire and must be evacuated first. If the fire guard is responsible for assisting in the evacuation, the fire guard should remain composed and in control of the situation. That's the end of this video, and hopefully it has been helpful for you. Remember the next step will be for you to go to FDNY headquarters at 9 Metrotique in Brooklyn and Y. They are open Monday through Friday and are closed on weekends and holidays. The exam is $25.00. You can also find a helpful app that you can download in the Google Play and Apple Store. The app is a great way to study and take the practice exams. Use your time wisely to study on the bus or train to take the exam. And review while you wait. Good luck on your exam, and we hope that Guardian Group Services was able to help get you through the process.